a reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Since the law has only a shadow of the good things to come, and not the true form of these realities, it can never, by the same sacrifices that are continually offered year after year, make perfect those who approach. Otherwise, would they not have ceased being offered, since the worshippers, cleanse once for all, would no longer have any consciousness of sin? But in these sacrifices, there is a reminder of sin year after year. For it is impossible for the blood of bulls and goats to take away sins. Consequently, when Christ came into the world, he said, Sacrifices and offerings you have not desired, but a body you have prepared for me. In burnt offerings and sin offerings you have taken no pleasure. And then I said, as, is, as it is written of me in the scroll of the book, See God, I have come to do your will, O God. When he said above, You have neither desired nor taken pleasure in sacrifices and offerings and burnt offerings and sin offerings. These are offered according to the law. Then he added, See, I have come to do your will. He abolishes the first in order to establish the second. And it is by God's will that we have been sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Our response is, Here I am, Lord, I come to do your will. Here I am, Lord, I come to do your will. I waited patiently for the Lord. He inclined to me and heard my cry. He put a new song in my mouth, a song of praise to our God. Here I am, Lord, I come to do your will. Sacrifice and offering you do not desire, but you have given me an open ear. Burnt offering and sin offering you have not required. Then I said, Here I am. Here I am, Lord, I come to do your will. I have told the glad news of deliverance in the great congregation. See, I have not restrained my lips, as you know, O Lord. Here I am, Lord, I come to do your will. I have not hidden your saving heart help within my heart. I have spoken of your faithfulness and your salvation. I have not concealed your steadfast love and your faithfulness from the great congregation. Here I am, Lord, I come to do your will. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord. The mother of Jesus and his brothers came to the house where he was standing outside. They sent to him and called him. The crowd was sitting around him, and they said to him, Your mother and your brother and sisters are outside asking for you. And he replied, who are my mother and my brothers? And looking at those who sat around him, he said, Here are my mother and my brothers. Whoever does the will of God is my brother and sister and mother. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Jesus Christ. Christ. Sisters, today we celebrate the great feast of Francis de Sales, who lived at a very difficult time in the history of the church, uh, about 500 years ago during the Reformation and also after something called the Council of Trent. And what St. Francis de Sales is specifically known for is his love and his charity. Uh, technically, he was a bishop over Geneva, which was actually a Protestant territory at the time. Uh, the person, the pastor that was over the area was by the, a man by the name of Theodore Beza was very influential in the Presbyterian um, as well as other reformed denominations. But what we see um, from specifically St. Francis de Sales is just his love and his charity at a time when Catholics and Protestants, and as we remember this week is the week of prayer for Christian unity, he was known always for his gentleness. He was always gentle. And oftentimes, brothers and sisters, we look at the history of the church and we see uh, the negative things 
And it's important because God is a God of truth, and indeed, we have to look at the times that we, uh, leaders and others, haven't really followed uh, the word of the Lord in Scripture and the tradition of the apostles. In fact, this is in Scripture itself, too. There's these whole books of First and Second Samuel and First and Second Kings that speak about uh, the difficulty that David had in following the Lord and, and the other, his other sons, um, Solomon, and uh, going into the division of the northern kingdom and southern kingdom. And also, this is echoed in the people's lives at the time that they truly weren't supporting the poor or loving those that needed to be loved following the law that God had set down for them. But also in Scripture, we also have two other books that we often don't see, First and Second Chronicles. They tell the same stories of these kings, the leaders of the people of God, but also they focus on the positive. They focus not, they don't sort of glean over the things in uh, the people of God's history that, that's bad, but they focus on the goodness, the light in the darkness, and indeed that's what we do today. Theodore Beza, who uh, would probably be the person, one of, one of the most responsible for these different Protestant denominations, said that when he met with Francis de Sales to talk about Catholicism, that he always felt a goodness and a love. And the message today is rather simple, that really gentleness and love always wins. This is what we hear in uh, our first reading where specifically the author of the Hebrew says that all the grand things that are going on at the temple, and indeed it was grand, people said that if you were in Jerusalem at the time, you'd hear the music all over Jerusalem, the sacrifices that are continually going on, that that is good, as he says elsewhere, but the offering of Jesus Christ in silence on the cross, with all of his, virtually all of his followers abandoning him, what we're doing right now as we, we represent Jesus to the Father in this little chapel as, as the world drives by, as we can see outside, outside the window, that that's it. Because love is always gentle and quiet and, and kind as we remember this great feast of this great man. So in everything, as we do our work for the Lord, uh, let us always remember love and gentleness. That's, that's always the answer. And we know it's the answer, too. It's the answer to our, our spouses, to our children, to our students, to our staff. Love, love and gentleness.